Hi, welcome back to Dwindling DS Diva. My name is Amber, and today we're going to talk about the Ruin Y or gastric bypass surgery. In my previous video, I mentioned that I had seen my endocrinologist, and she suggested that I would be a good candidate for this particular surgery. Meanwhile, she wrote me a referral to the U of U bariatric team, and we began to get that process going. And while that was being done, I decided it was time for me to start researching the Ruin Y surgery, as I really didn't know anything about it. And I wanted to be really prepared to meet the bariatric team and go into it with every bit of knowledge that I could come up with. And so this is going to be another high level overview of what I've learned about the Ruin Y surgery. So this surgery is the longest performed surgery in the United States historically. It is also the most frequently performed surgery. With this particular surgery, what they do is they make a small egg shaped pouch at the lower end of the esophagus right as it comes into the stomach and so they divide it right there at the very top of the stomach but they leave the entire stomach in your body so that remaining portion of your stomach never has any food go into it but it does still create gastric juices and enzymes now what they do is they sew that tiny egg-shaped pouch at the top of your stomach so since they don't have the same shape as with the VSG where they make that tube shape they are also altering your stomach so it doesn't have the same functions as it did before your stomach no longer has a pylorus valve which is what is at the very end of your stomach that releases food into your intestines so it just goes straight from your stomach into the new portion of intestines that they make. So your stomach is very small. It can only hold about two ounces of food. Now, the other portion of the surgery, what they do is they disconnect your intestines at the jejunum, and they take that portion of intestine and they put it up and connect it to that small gastric pouch that they made. They then take the other end and connect that to your small intestine. Now this bypasses a large portion of your duodenum. So it works not only by using restriction like you see with the vertical gastric sleeve, also uses malabsorptive properties as well. So your body is not absorbing all the calories and fats and things from the food that you eat. So it's actually helping your body to lose weight in two different ways. With this surgery, you also have a reduction in the ghrelin hormone, just like you do with VSG. Again, this is going to be an initial reduction. So you're gonna see that hunger come back as well. With this surgery, with the gastric bypass, you can expect to lose about 60 to 80% of your excess weight. Historical data shows that patients 20 years post-op keep off about 50% of their excess weight. Surgery, if you have GERDs or acid reflux, most patients see relief or complete resolution of their acid reflux problems. You have a potential for more weight loss in comparison to the VSG. And with this surgery, it's also reversible. So. With the VSG surgery, they remove that excess portion of your stomach, so it cannot be put back. With this surgery, you can reverse it, although I'm not sure why after having this surgery, you would actually want to reverse the surgery, but to each their own. Now, with this surgery, because they do change the function of the stomach when they make that small pouch, you no longer have the pylorus valve that empties food from your stomach into your intestines. So because of that, you can experience dumping syndrome. So what happens is your body has a harder time processing carbs and sugars, and those things move through your system very quickly. So they just go right from the stomach into the intestine. And when that happens, you can feel really awful. You can get 
hot, sweaty, shaky, you could have nausea, vomiting, and none of those things are pleasant. But pain is a fantastic motivator. So if you have food addictions and those are things that you gravitate towards, this may help you to stay away from those things because of that aversion to those foods. So that's something to think about. Some of the cons with this surgery is the vitamin and mineral deficiencies that you might suffer from after this surgery. So it is a requirement with this surgery to be on a lifelong vitamin regimen. So that's something to keep in mind. And then again, you have the dumping syndrome. So it depends on which side of the fence you're on. If you do have those food addictions, it could be a pro. If you don't, having dumping syndrome could be a con, but at this point and stage in the game, if you're getting bariatric surgery to lose weight, should you really be eating carbs and sugars? That's a question that you need to ask yourself as well. So there are the dietary restrictions that could be a con for you as well. So the Ruin Y or gastric bypass surgery is typically known as the golden standard. And when comparing VSG to the gastric bypass, I feel, in my opinion, if you suffer from GERS or acid reflux, this is probably a better surgery for you to consider, considering you can have resolution or at least some relief from those problems. If you have an eating disorder because of the dumping syndrome, it may be a better option for you than VSG because again, that pain is gonna motivate you not to eat those things that you want to eat. And if you have a lot of weight to lose, then because of the potential for greater weight loss, this surgery may be a better option for you. On the flip side, if you aren't willing to commit to a lifelong regimen of vitamins, then this is definitely not the surgery for you. If you have a lower BMI, then this surgery may be too aggressive. You may be able to reach all your health goals with something just as simple as the VSG. You also need to take into account the comorbidities that you may have if you may benefit more from a surgery like VSG or benefit more from a surgery like the gastric bypass. So the different health conditions that you suffer from also really play into what may or may not be better for you. So these are all things that you should definitely talk to your surgeon about. So after all my research, I was really ready to go talk to the bariatric surgeon at the U of U. I was really excited. I had done all of my homework and I had compiled a huge list of questions to ask so that I could really make the best decision. I am one of those kinds of people who I like to know as much as I can about anything before I do it. And I told them that I practically wanted to be able to perform this surgery myself before I was going to let someone else do it. I mean, obviously I'm not able to perform the surgery, but I have a very good knowledge about it. So I had compared the two different surgeries and there was one that I was leaning towards more than the other, but they both had pros and cons and they were both split down the middle pretty evenly. So I wanted to meet with the surgeon, discuss my options with them, and decide which one would be better for me personally. However, I never got the chance. And we'll talk about that in my next video. Bye for now.